Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today, we're delving into the realm of unused characters, elusive figures that were mentioned by Rowling but never made an appearance in any officially released material, whether it be books or films. While we have been enthralled by the likes of Harry, Hermione, and Ron, there exists a treasure trove of characters lying dormant in the scribblings, unpublished drafts, and words spoken by JK Rowling during interviews. Some were scrapped in the editing process, others lost to the ever advancing plot, and the rest just weren't quite Harry Potter material. Today, we'll be delving into the sketches, interviews, and whispered rumors to uncover these intriguing yet unused characters, discussing their origins, powers, and the roles they may have played if given the chance. From a lost Weasley family member to a Hogwarts toad ghost, to a professor named Pettigrew, this list has it all. I've managed to piece together 30 characters in total, which does already seem quite a lot, but if I missed any, please let me know in the comments and I'll address it in a future video. For organization's sake, I'm going to be listing them in alphabetical order. Anyway, I won't babble any longer, let's dive in. Bathsheba Babbling Professor Bathsheba Babbling was a witch and a professor of the study of ancient runes at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. She was never mentioned in any officially released material, and has only ever been mentioned on a draft release on JK Rowling's website. The Black Knight was an unused ghost of Hogwarts. While not much info has been disclosed about the Black Knight, it would appear that Rowling had already introduced enough ghosts and simply didn't have any use for him. He is mentioned in the Pottermore article entitled Hogwarts Ghosts. Elsie Bones was a character and intended Order of the Phoenix member who was kidnapped in an early draft of the Harry Potter books entitled The Red-Eyed Dwarf. Given her surname, she is a possible relation of Amelia Bones, celebrated head of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement, Susan Bones, Hogwarts student, and Edgar Bones, brother of Amelia and fellow Order of the Phoenix member. After Voldemort was defeated during the Battle of Hogwarts, she was said to have been returned She's mentioned on page 176 of A History of Magic. Stephen Cornfoot, one of the original 40, was a pure-blood wizard in Harry's year at Hogwarts. The original 40, which is mentioned a reasonable amount in this video, is best described in Rowling's own words. Two of my most prized possessions are a pair of small notebooks, which contain my very first scribblings about Harry Potter. Much of what is written in them was never used in the series, although it is startling to come across the odd line of dialogue that subsequently made it, verbatim, to publication. In one of the books is a list of 40 names of students in Harry's year, including Harry, Ron, and Hermione, all allocated houses with small symbols beside each name depicting each boy or girl's parentage. There isn't much info available on Stephen, but we do know that he was either in Hufflepuff or Ravenclaw. His existence was revealed by JK Rowling on her website, where she shares some of her original Harry Potter scribblings. Kevin Entwistle, another of the original 40, was a student in Ravenclaw House at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry in Harry's year. There was also an Annabelle Entwistle in one of the video games. Although he never appeared in any of the books or movies, his existence was revealed by JK Rowling on her website, where she shares some of her original Harry Potter scribblings. In the very early drafts of the books, our beloved Hermione Granger actually had a muggle sister that we only know as Miss Granger. The reasoning for this was unclear, and because she didn't really have any relevance to the plot, JK decided to remove her. Rowling first mentioned Miss Granger in an interview. Does Hermione have any brothers or sisters? No, she doesn't. When I first made up Hermione, I gave her a younger sister, but she was very hard to work in. The younger sister was not supposed to go to Hogwarts. She was supposed to remain a muggle. It was a sideline that didn't work very well, and it did not have a big place in the story. Edmund Grubb was another unused ghost at Hogwarts School. He lived in the Victorian era and died in the doorway of the Great Hall at Hogwarts Castle after ingesting poisonous berries. After his death, he returned as a ghost to haunt the castle, sometimes stopping people from getting into the Great Hall out of spite. JK Rowling has expressed that she rather regrets leaving Grubb out of the books, he is mentioned in the Pottermore article entitled Hogwarts Ghosts. Megan Jones, another of the original 40, was a Hufflepuff student in the same year as Harry at Hogwarts. It's possible that she is related to other members of the Jones family. Gwenick Jones, Hestia Jones, 
Peter Jones and Stuart Jones. If that's the case, then we can reasonably infer that Megan was a half-blood. Her existence was revealed by JK Rowling on her website, where she shares some of her original Harry Potter scribblings. Oakden Hernshaw, also Oakden Hobday, was a character that JK Rowling considered making the Defense Against the Dark Arts Professor in Harry Potter's fifth year. Instead, we got Dolores Umbridge as the Data Professor. His existence was revealed on JK Rowling's website in one of her early drafts. Wayne Hopkins, another of the original 40, was a Hufflepuff student in the same year as Harry at Hogwarts. It's possible that he's related to Carl Hopkins, which would make him a half-blood. His existence was revealed by JK Rowling on her website, where she shares some of her original Harry Potter scribblings. Suli, another of the original 40, was a Ravenclaw student in the same year as Harry at Hogwarts. Her existence was first revealed in Harry Potter and Me, a Christmas television special by BBC broadcast on the 28th of December 2001. Mafalda was a long-lost Weasley family member and the daughter of the second cousin who's a stockbroker mentioned in the Philosopher's Stone. There's actually a lot of info on her. Mafalda was the daughter of the second cousin who's a stockbroker mentioned in Philosopher's Stone. This stockbroker had been very rude to Mr. and Mrs. Weasley in the past, but now he and his muggle wife had inconveniently produced a witch. They came back to the Weasleys asking for their help in introducing her to Wizarding Society before she starts at Hogwarts. The Weasleys agreed to taking her for part of the summer, including the Quidditch World Cup, but regretted this almost immediately. Mrs. Weasley suspected that Mafalda's parents simply wanted to get rid of her for a while, because she turns out to be the most unpleasant child Mrs. Weasley has ever met. Unfortunately, however, Mafalda had to be removed due to a lack of planning on Rowling's behalf. The first three books, my plan never failed me, but I should have put that plot under a microscope. I wrote what I thought was half the book, and ack, huge gaping hole in the middle of the plot. I missed my deadline by two months, and the whole profile of the books got so much higher since the third book, there was an edge of external pressure. And what exactly was that gaping hole all about? I had to pull a character, there you go, the phantom character of Harry Potter. As it turns out, Mafalda was the original Rita Skeeter, or at least another Rita Skeeter type. She was also very intelligent, a rival to Hermione. She served the same function that Rita Skeeter now serves. Rita was always going to be in the book, but I built her up because I needed a kind of conduit for information outside the school. Originally, this girl fulfilled this purpose. Mafalda was supposed to convey certain information about the Death Eaters to Harry, Ron, and Hermione, because as a nosy, eavesdropping Slytherin who likes to impress, she does not keep her mouth shut when she overhears their sons and daughters talking. Unfortunately, however bright I made her, there were obvious limitations to what an 11 year old closeted at school could discover, whereas Rita Skeeter, whom I subsequently built up to fulfill Mafalda's function, was much more flexible. Her existence was revealed by JK Rowling in an interview. Roger Malone, another of the original 40, was either a Ravenclaw or Hufflepuff student in the same year as Harry at Hogwarts. His existence was first revealed in Harry Potter and Me, a Christmas television special by BBC, broadcast on the 28th of December 2001. Angus and Elspeth McKinnon were Order of the Phoenix members that were captured in a very early and unused chapter entitled The Red-Eyed Dwarf. Both he and Elspeth appear to have been merged into the character of Marlene McKinnon. They are mentioned on page 176 of A History of Magic. Mildred was a muggle woman who was supposedly engaged to Jacob Kowalski. She left him and handed him back her ring after hearing that he didn't get a loan for his bakery. Lily Moon, another of the original 40, was a student in the same year as Harry at Hogwarts. It's possible that Lily may have been an early version of Luna Lovegood's character. Her existence was first revealed in Harry Potter and Me. Mopsus was originally intended to be one of the divination professors at Hogwarts. Mopsus was the name of a famous seer in Greek mythology, which seems fitting. He has only ever been mentioned on a draft released on Rowling's website. Mopsy the dog lover was a highly eccentric, dog-loving old witch who lived on the edge of Hogsmeade. During fourth year, she looked after Sirius whilst he was in his dog form, thinking he was a stray. She was cut because she added nothing to the plot. Although never explicitly stated, it's highly likely that Mopsy the dog lover and Mopsy Fleabert the author of Animal Ghosts of Britain, are the same individual. Enid Pettigrew was the name of a possible Defense Against the Dark Arts or Divination Professor 
that didn't make the cut. She would have been installed as data professor in Harry's fourth, sixth, or seventh year, or as divination professor in Harry's third year. It's likely that this character would have been related to Peter Pettigrew, aka Wormtail. Her existence was revealed by JK Rowling on her website, where she shares some of her original Harry Potter scribblings. Pyrites was a servant of Voldemort who was intended to meet Sirius Black in front of the Potter's house. He is mentioned in an interview by Rowling. Other drafts included a character by the name of Pyrites, whose name means Fool's Gold. He was a servant of Voldemort and was meeting Sirius in front of the Potter's house. Pyrites too had to be discarded, though I quite liked him as a character. He was a dandy and wore white silk gloves, which I thought might stain artistically with blood from time to time. Argo Pyrites was a wizard, alchemist, and the author of Alchemy, Ancient Art, and Science. He's mentioned in an early draft of the Philosopher's Stone. So this Flamel bloke found the stone, said Ron. No, he made it, said Harry. He was an alchemist, which means someone who turns base metals into gold, said Hermione. She had that old proving I know more than everyone else look on her face. The other two noticed. Of course, I read about this in Alchemy, Ancient Art, and Science by Argo Pyrites. I miss that one myself, muttered Ron. Oliver Rivers, another of the original 40, was either a Hufflepuff or Ravenclaw student in the same year as Harry at Hogwarts. His existence was first revealed in Harry Potter and Me. Sophie Roper, another of the original 40, was either a Hufflepuff, Gryffindor, or Slytherin student in the same year as Harry at Hogwarts. Her existence was first revealed in Harry Potter and Me. Runcorn was a Hogwarts student in Harry's year and possible relation to Albert Runcorn, a ministry worker that Harry impersonated. Runcorn's surname is visible on the small portion of the second page of J.K. Rowling's student list shown on the BBC Christmas television special Harry Potter and Me. Myla Sylvanus was a potential Defense Against the Dark Arts professor in Harry's fifth year at Hogwarts. The name Sylvanus was later reappropriated as the given name of Sylvanus Kettleburn, Professor of Care of Magical Creatures. Sally Smith, another of the original 40, was either a Hufflepuff, Gryffindor, or Slytherin student in the same year as Harry at Hogwarts. On Pottermore, Rowling revealed that the character's given name was originally Georgina, but that this was crossed out and replaced with Sally. Her existence was first revealed in Harry Potter and Me. Mr. Thomas was a wizard and the biological father of Dean Thomas. During the First Wizarding War, Mr. Thomas abandoned his muggle wife and young Dean in an effort to protect them from the Death Eaters. He was soon after murdered by the Death Eaters when he refused to join their cause. His existence was revealed by J.K. Rowling on her website, where she shares some of her original Harry Potter scribblings. The Toad was an unused animal ghost of Hogwarts school who was known for leaving ectoplasm all over the Hogwarts classrooms. The Toad is mentioned in the Pottermore article entitled Hogwarts Ghosts. Trocar was a vampire professor at Hogwarts that was cut by Rowling. Looking back through my earliest notebooks, however, I found that on my very earliest list of staff, there was a subjectless vampire teacher I had forgotten called Trocar. A Trocar is a sharply pointed shaft inserted into arteries or cavities to extract bodily fluids, so I think it's a rather good name for a vampire. Evidently, I did not think much of him as a character, though because he disappears fairly early on in my notes. For a long time, there was a persistent fan rumor that Snape might be a vampire. While it is true that he has an unhealthy pallor and is sometimes described as looking like a large bat in his long black cloak, he never actually turns into a bat, we meet him outside the castle by daylight, and no corpses with puncture marks in their necks ever turn up at Hogwarts. In short, Snape is not a revamped trocar. He is first mentioned in an interview by J.K. Rowling, as we reach the end of our journey through the depths of J.K. Rowling's early drafts, interviews, and scribbles, I find myself absolutely intrigued by the sheer number of unused characters that lay hidden beneath the surface of Harry Potter. While the information about these characters may be limited, we're always free to start using our imaginations, and it's fun to take what little we have and embark on our own adventures, weaving tales and constructing vibrant backstories for some of these omitted individuals. As J.K. Rowling once said, whether you come back by page or by the big screen, Hogwarts will always be there to welcome you home. And indeed, it is comforting to know that the enchantment of the Wizarding World extends far beyond what was officially released. That's it for today. If you enjoyed the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, 
It does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.